Hey everybody, Jake here, and today we're going to take a look at the Kershaw Launch 4. This is my first and only automatic at the moment, so I'll go ahead and go over my initial impressions, what I kind of think about the knife, um, you know, what I like, what I dislike, what I'm kind of neutral towards, and then compare it to some other knives and give you a conclusion. Alright, first up, we'll go ahead and do a size comparison. Let's move that down there. And we'll go ahead and get out the CRKT Pilar. So you can see the Pilar, a um, little bit longer blade, a little bit longer handle, a little bit wider. Um, it is actually thinner though. Let's see if you can see that there. And that's one of my complaints we'll get back to, but this is a, a fairly thick knife. Go ahead and bring out what I believe is the most compelling comparison, the Spyderco Dragonfly. So, similarly sized handle. Stop shaking, bro. Similarly sized handle. It's not going to stop it. A um, little bit longer blade. A little bit wider when it's closed. I'll show you here. But it's significantly thinner. By, by quite a bit. So you can see there it is a little bit wider. Maybe like one and a half times as wide. It's not too bad. Victorinox Classic, just for fun, because the Classic kind of replaced where I carry this knife. I'll go over that in just a bit. And give you a little bit better size reference, here's the ZT0450CF. All right, let's go ahead and go over what I like about it. All right, so first thing up is the design. Um, the design is very compelling. When it's closed, it's just kind of this coffin-shaped, you know, thing. There's a little bit of blade protrusion, which kind of bothers me, but it's not too bad. There's some angles and things on there. You can see they did quite a few little uh, flats just to kind of give it a bit more of a unique design. Very intriguing. Um, all aluminum construction. The blade steel is CPM 154, which is a good steel. Um, the aluminum is not too bad. It will get dinged up and stuff over time. That's to be expected. If you're okay with that, perfect. The blade shape is basically the reason I bought this knife, though. Um, I sold my Booze Blades Mini Arrow, which sometimes I regret, sometimes I don't. I wasn't carrying it. So, But one of the things I liked about that knife is the kind of spear point blade. So I bought this to kind of replace that. Because when I do get up here, I can do um, little precision cuts. So you can... You can do very exact things with this, and that's part of the reason I bought it. You can also puncture it into um, bags very, very easily with this. It's a great, great knife for, you know, punching into. Uh, the thing I open the most really is dog and cat food. Punch it and slice. Super easy. It's great for opening letters that way. On um, boxes, things like that. It's a, it's a great little um, EDC shape. I have found no issues with blade shape, and it's it's one of the things that compel me to buy this knife probably the most. The weight and size um, are okay. I, I actually like the weight and um, part of the size. <laughs> so the weight's a little less than two ounces. It's, again, aluminum and steel. It's fairly thick, but it, it doesn't weigh too much down in the pocket. It's nice. You usually don't notice it's there. And the size overall is nice. Um, it's fairly short, fairly compact until you get to the thickness. We'll come back to that. But overall, it's, it's a really, really compelling little size for a knife. Fit and finish are great on this as well. I've handled Kershaw's in the past. The fit and finish has been okay. This is one of their American-made line. You can tell by the, the flag there. So the fit and finish is going to be a little bit better. There's no sharp edges, really, even on the inside. The blade isn't even you know sharp on the spine, which is sometimes the case with cheaper knives. Everything's very rounded and very well finished. I like it quite a bit. They did a really, really good job finishing on this knife, and um, I think that kind of helps digest the price a little bit. On to the neutral. Speaking of price, it's a little high. Um, the price on these are $75. It's a decent steel. It's an automatic, made in America. I get that. But I think it would be much more compelling around 50 
maybe 60. I think 75 is a little high. Especially for the size and things like that, and you can get other knives in their launch line that are larger, that use more materials, and they're similarly priced, and that kind of sucks. And when you find these aftermarket, they're going for about 40 bucks, so the resale value isn't up there nearly as high as the price that you're going to be paying because everyone can kind of tell like hey this is a little bit high guys so just keep that in mind you're going to be paying a little bit of a premium for a few things on this but you know next up thickness so the most compelling comparison to me is the Spyderco Dragonfly and you can see the thickness differential is insane it's it's extremely noticeable it weighs more and it's going to because you know made out of metal versus FRN or whatever the hell this is made out of um, it has a few advantages over the dragonfly but the dragonfly just has a lot more going for it in my opinion and the little bit of width tax that you pay by keeping this you know the dragonfly over this really isn't all that much in my opinion especially when it comes to thickness because when I kept this um, knife with me a lot it was in my watch pocket which is that little secondary pocket on the right hand side of your jeans that has since been been replaced by this um, especially because I can carry a normal size knife and that and has a little bit more utility it's significantly thinner you know it's a lot lighter it's just smaller overall but this is a good knife for that it's just a little bit thick I really think they could have cut down the blade stock a tiny bit. They definitely could have cut down the scales. And the thickness, the reason it's not in the dislike, it's in the neutrals, because it gives it a feeling of robustness. It really does. It feels like a bit of a tanky, tiny knife. Um, kind of like the Pilar. Maybe not quite as bit, but it's, it's kind of up there with that. But you are paying for that. You're paying for that with your everyday carry comfortability. And it's just, it's a little chunky. kind of wish they had taken it down. Um, it looks like they just overfed it and they should have maybe tried to tone it down just a bit. The ergos are helped a little bit by that thickness, but that's about it. Um, it does kind of slope down so you can kind of sort of get some semblance of a grip. If you can put your thumb far enough back on this, you can get you know something like that, but it's, it's not really secure. It doesn't feel good. I usually find myself getting a, a solid three finger grip and then putting my thumb right up here. That does impede on the cutting edge a little bit, but you know, if, if you're trying to use the whole cutting part of the knife, there's not really a super comfortable way to hold this. It's okay, the thickness does add some, some um, substance there, but that's about it. It's, it's a little difficult to get a really good ergonomic, you know, rock hard grip on this just because of the shape and things like that. The thickness, again, helps a little bit, but that's about it. The action on this is not great. It's not terrible. It kicks a lot. I'll show you. So um, the first time I opened this, I held it like this, which was a terrible idea because I never opened um, this particular knife before I handled other automatics. But it kicks quite a bit. So hold it with two fingers down. I'll, I'll kind of show you what I mean. So you can see all the wobble there. So generally when I open this knife, I'm getting a really, really solid grip on it, putting it up against the pad of my hand, and then opening it. And it doesn't move at all. Well, it's got the little kick, but it's not bad, but you do have to get used to that. But the closing is not pleasant. It's very kind of stick slip. It's not great. And the button itself, um, you can see everything's kind of like DLC coated. Or painted one of the two when you're pressing the button the coatings rubbing up against each other from the scales and the button sides and it just doesn't it doesn't feel all that good to open and close to be honest which is let's face it a big reason why people like me buy knives because I don't I'm not doing very difficult cutting tasks with them I'm usually fiddling with them opening boxes things like that and the opening and closing just isn't that good on this thing onto the dislike. So one of these is really bad, one of them is not so bad. Uh, f not so bad one first. It can't be disassembled. Um, 
that isn't terrible. I guess you can kind of get around it. It's not super complex. You can, you know, probably go in and clean it out fairly easily. But it's kind of a pain. So what you can do, you can remove the pivot screw. You can remove the clip and you can remove these two screws back here and you'll get a little separation at the back of the scales, but you cannot push this pivot through. You can't force it out. Um, there's no other way to really open this up and that kind of sucks. I couldn't find any disassembly videos on this or tutorials or anything like that. If you have one, um, feel free to leave it in the comments and I'll check it out. But as far as I can tell, there really isn't an easy way to disassemble this and that's kind of frustrating because it isn't automatic and you're going to want to get in there and be able to clean that out so it doesn't get gunked up and things like that. You can always send it back to Kershaw to do that, but it would be nice if I could service this myself. Clip on this thing is trash. The clip is as long as the freaking knife is, and I know some people like that. I understand that. But I think, I hate to keep bringing it back to the Dragonfly, but it's just a better knife in my opinion. The, the clip is so much shorter on the Dragonfly, it's not even funny, it's literally like half the size. And I like it so much more. It's it's deep carry, which I love, it leaves a little bit of the knife hanging out, but it, this thing goes down the entire body of the knife, and not only does it look stupid, it's not great for ergonomics. I've tried several different clips uh, clip styles on this, and they just, I can't find one that works that well. I would like to find something small and deep carry, and mainly for that clip issue alone it makes in the thickness it makes carrying this just a huge pain because you do have to put it in that watch pocket or kind of let it um i guess you can use this clip but it's just it's just not that good like the clip's fine because it's the same clip on zt0450 literally the exact same clip but it works on the 0450 because it's a full-size knife it's fine and the 0450 is also <laughs> <laughs> quite a bit thinner than this is but this super thick knife with this ridiculous clip it just doesn't I don't find carrying it to be enjoyable and I've literally contemplated selling this before just because I it's it's just a pain to carry I'll probably keep it because it's the only auto that I own at the moment but if I get another one this one's probably going to be going somewhere all right on to the conclusion Conclusion is, if you're looking for something exactly like this, you want an automatic, you're dead set on that, you want a, you know, a, a nice blade shape, you want good build construction, um, good materials, not too worried about ergos, things like that, if you're dead set on this knife, get it. It's not terrible by any means. I would, if you can try it out first for a day or so, I would do that. If you have a friend who has one or something like that, borrow it from them, see how you like it. If you're not dead set on the auto, you just want something small with a similar-ish blade shape, go with the Dragonfly. It's it's so much better. It In the pocket, it's, it's not really all that different. It's a much better clip. You know, it's, it's much more pleasing to open. The back lock's kind of a pain for me. I'm not a big fan of back locks but the ergonomics are really where this one takes it away. It has a finger troll, your hands lock right in there. I, I can even get you know a decent three and a half finger grip on this thing and really lock in and you have more blade to work with. It's a higher grind, thinner blade stock, it's gonna slice better. It's not gonna be as durable um, it, because you know the blade stock is thinner. The handles are made of a softer, cheaper material. But I would go with this one every day. This I actually carry this one. I never carry this Kershaw launch anymore. Um, I got the Dragonfly maybe a week or two after I got the launch. I think that's about right. It's been a while. Um, Dragonfly immediately took over. I, I don't carry this anymore. It sits. I've just been holding on to it, waiting to review it, and I finally decided, you know what, it's time to do that. And it's okay. That's about all I can say about it is it's, it's okay. It's For what it is, it's, it's nice, but I just don't find it to be compelling, and it probably won't be staying in my collection very long. Thanks for tuning in, guys. If you have any feedback or anything like that, leave it down in the comments. Any questions, anything, um, just let me know. If you're interested in purchasing this knife for me for whatever reason, let, let me know. Hit me up with an offer, and we'll talk. Um, but yeah, it's, it's okay. That's about it.
But check out my other videos if you're looking for something else that you might want to carry. It's in similar price range. Um, again, the Dragonfly. If you're if you're just looking for a fun one to play with, the Real Steel Metamorph is fantastic. I have a review on that one. Go check all that out. And I'll have a review of the Dragonfly coming up soon if you'd like to compare them. All right, thanks, guys.